If they're not adding to your life, you're settling. <laughs> so only settle when you're happy. Never settle. Oh my god. No, no, don't, don't settle even when you're happy. When you're happy, you're not settling. <laughs> All right, we now back. We got shows T Tree. She is a polymath. She does yoga. I'm trying to take off like a rocket ship. She told my boy put it on a cup. <laughs> She teaches classes, she does lots of nature, she's a very great influencer on Instagram and she's going viral for this, her crazy stretching yoga poses that she does everywhere and introduce yourself. Oh uh, yeah, um, so I do teach yoga, I'm also a painter, an author, um, I like to describe myself as multi-dimensional because there's a lot of different things that I like to do. Um, I like to work with my hands a lot, um, I model as well. Um, honestly, anything creative, I'm into it mm -hmm. every time. So when you go on, on Instagram, you look at your page, you know, you have a lot of stretching and yoga poses. What has yoga and stretching taught you? Uh, yoga has taught me so much. Oh my goodness. Yoga has taught me to slow down, first yeah. and foremost. Uh, yeah. It's taught me that I'm limitless and I can use this tool that is my body to kind of ignite or uh, inspire my mind to kind of think in a limitless way as well. Cause I'm mm. bending, I'm never breaking, I'm never pulling anything, I'm never in pain. I'm constantly just evolving mm. as a yogi. So I like to let that kind of translate to my mind and let that be like a physical representation or a physical tool I can remind myself like I'm limitless. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's done a lot. So, <laughs> so has stretching and yoga, has it relaxed you a lot? Has it made you stronger? Are these some of the things that we hear about? Are these, tr are these true? Absolutely. Mm. Oh my goodness, they are so true. Um, I don't really work out too much. I, I did try to go to the gym consistently. I don't really go as consistent. I just practice yoga and mm. I can float on my arms. I can do a couple of different things that I know I couldn't have done without the consistency. And mm. also not even just the strength, but also like the, the willpower, the mental aspect, like viewing it to where like I can do that. And if I work up to this point, I'm gonna be able to. So it's not just the physical, it's also the mental and being stern and being like, I'm in the ground. Mm. I can lift myself up, you know? Uh, but yeah, and getting mm. more flexible, definitely. Uh, I feel like consistency with anything. How, how long flexible. did it take you to get that flexible? Um, I started, uh, so I'm 23. I started consistently practicing when I was around 19 so 19 20 21 22 23 it's so like five years mm -hmm. yeah can yoga help anger yes mm. um definitely because if you're slowing your heart rate down you're doing different asanas there's, there's also different asanas that have to do with the heart chakra have to do with the root chakra mm. wherever your anger is stored in your body you can definitely liberate yourself from that and also through pranayama slowing your breath down allowing the mental aspect the spiritual aspect along with the physical aspect you can calm down your entire person you can cool off your entire body mm, so that's what it does it cools you down yeah it's like it cools cool. you down mentally and physically mm. so it, it, it's definitely special for the men out here what? who like <laughs> what? yeah Okay, so what's the, what's the inspiration to you as a divine feminine woman? Who, who has been inspiring you? Who has been inspiring you to get tap into this feminine energy? I mean, it's really a matter of like, who doesn't inspire me, to be honest. Like, I think I'm surrounded by a lot of women that inspire the crap out of me, even if it's like small things or small mannerisms or small, like, sim whatever it is. I think there's all the women around me, anybody you see me with, anybody whose events I go to, all these women, and especially like the matriarchs in my family, my family members inspire me. Mm. Um, I like to just collect the love and the inspiration from everybody. Mm. Okay, so you're a cancer. If you mind me asking, what do you do to take care of your emotional state? Uh, meditate. Meditate, that's good. <laughs> Meditation's probably the biggest thing because I can feel my emotions like rising in me. So if I can figure out how to transmute that energy to where like I'm spreading it out, where I can really observe and look at it, it prevents me from reacting too abruptly. So mm. um, meditation is probably the first thing. The second thing is, uh, like we were discussing earlier, having a physical outlet, which would be yoga, 
and then also having a, a more imaginative creative outlet which would be like my painting or my poetry I feel like having those two outlets kind of gives me too many spaces to release so mm -hmm. that definitely will even out <laughs> everything yes what advice do you give to the dating to the woman in the dating pool as of this year what advice yeah would you give to a woman the biggest advice I would give to women in the dating pool as of 2023 is to never settle. That sounds so cliche, mm. but I feel like we're in a society where like there's certain things pushed on you. And it's like, oh, like he's a little toxic, but I mean, he, he has all this bread or like he has all of this or whatever. Like you're still settling, sis. You feel mm. me? So I think never settling and then also like believing in yourself, mm -hmm. believing in what you feel, believing in, the, in your intuition, like yeah. placing all of that belief into yourself. So when you see something that feel right, you're in it. But it, when, when you see something that you don't, it's kind mm -hmm. of because we see red flags up and down. Yeah, yeah. But we'll still go to the party. You feel right, me? Right, right, so, right. So when you say yeah. not, when you say never settling, you're saying always have options. Nah, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, never settling in terms of. Uh, not choosing to be with somebody due to them being able to provide stability to some extent whether okay. it's just financial or just uh emotional or just mental or whatever because like finding comfort in people is cool yeah but like if you still see kind of a lot of red flags i don't think it's a, it's a smart thing even if they do bring some ounce of comfortability stability whatever I feel like you're still settling regardless mm -hmm. when, mm -hmm. when you're not happy all the way around if they're not adding to your life you're settling <laughs> so only settle when you're happy never settle oh my god no no don't, don't settle even when you're happy when you're happy you're not settling but no like okay you know how they say settle is like okay you found the right person settle down yeah yes. okay that's i see what you're saying yeah, i'm yeah. thinking about settle in terms of going below a level versus no, going up a level settling all settling is is like okay you know, it's adulting, like, you know, it's just creating a family with a person, you know settling what I'm saying? Down. Like, ad 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 adulting, maturing. I don't really like the way settling down sounds either. Settling I, down, okay. I don't think that's what I would use. Okay, what about rising up? Growing in love. Rising in love. Yeah. That sounds better? All yeah, right. settling down feels like I'm settling down, but I'm settling. Like, the word settling just doesn't fit in my mind right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, how do you get over trauma and healing? from people in the past as we were discussing earlier that is something that i'm still uh, grappling with at mm. 23 um but the biggest way that i would say to get over trauma and people of the past is to realize that it's not the person you know it's not the person that you're attached to it's the emotions it's the memories like we were saying the songs it's the circumstances it's how good the time period felt it's who you saw yourself to be when you were with that person how amazing you saw yourself what you feel like they brought out of you you feel me but that's all a matter of what you create what you perceive and what you allow to be essentially mm. so I would say kind of taking away the person themselves from all the memories all the other attachments all the beautiful things the flowers you bloomed around this person i guess mm. and just looking at that person and realizing like you know that's that's not here anymore so i can still take this light that i have the ability to create these memories the ability to create whatever and go through other phases of life and allow time to heal that wound mm. but still like you know acknowledging it first and foremost acknowledging it yeah, yeah. you have to acknowledge it. if you don't look at it you don't even realize how you can fix it yeah yeah so, so that awareness definitely yeah meditation or yoga meditation or yoga yeah they're together pranayama together. asana okay. and meditation are together <laughs> <laughs> okay they're friends yeah yes what's the most powerful benefit of having locks that you have experienced you have some nice locks thank you um i would say the most powerful benefit to having locks is uh so your locks being an extension of your nervous system, right? You know, uh, our hairs on our body, they read energy. Mm. So I feel like the biggest, uh, the biggest thing that I love about having locks is the ability to come into rooms and realize like, oh, like something feels off, but it's not just an intuition thing. It's also like my hairs on my body rising, but I feel it on my head first. Mm. So it's like, okay, I might need to cover my head or I might not need to be here. You know, mm. so it's really just a matter of being able to connect like Avatar. Yeah, I look at it like that. Uh, it's similar to that to some extent. So it taps into those telepathic powers is what people say. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that personally. Yeah, no, you're yeah. right. I, I totally agree with that. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you also practice Ifa. Do you feel like Ifa is uh is something for everyone to practice? Um, something for everyone. Yeah. Like, would mean, you recommend it? I to mean, it's recommended. Someone? I think it's recommended for me. Mm. I really think everybody has their own journey. We're all chasing the divine. We're all chasing the energies that are in the world. We're all connecting, you know? Mm. So I can't really tell somebody, like, you should go practice Ifa. Like, nah, mm. it's really just a matter of if you feel inclined to do inclined. that. If you feel it in your heart. And it, it finds you. It's not something that you just stumble upon. Mm. It finds you. So if that's your route to God or the source, mm -hmm. then let it be that. Uh, yeah, I don't really recommend anything. I just allow people to experience, and if you feel it, you feel it. If you don't, yeah, that's beautiful too. Yeah, <laughs> you get nature quite often. What's your favorite element? Earth, water, air, or fire? Definitely water. Water. I mm. love me some water. Is it cancer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It calms down everything. Mm. Literally calms down everything. Mm. Are you poly or monogamous? I'm definitely uh, monogamous. Monogamous. Yeah. My bad. I just meant to say. No, it's okay. <laughs> so you're monogamous. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, what don't you like about poly? Um, Do you feel like it's not realistic, or you feel like it's just, you you just you just not for poly right now? I just don't think I have space in my life to spread myself that thin. There's so many other. There's so many things that I like to do. Yeah. And one thing being a water sign, I really like stability. I really like groundness. Yeah. So I really think like having like two other emotions to consider all the lot. time with my own yeah <laughs> i might lose it yeah. so i feel like having that one is like okay like i have the space whenever you don't have the space you have the space whenever i don't have it cool mm. we can work that out but yeah. later in my life if i feel inclined to go a different route cool but at this moment i can't handle that mm. truthfully <laughs> what's one of your favorite spiritual practices to, to clean your energy my favorite one of your favorite rituals whether it's baths saging incense What's one of your favorite rituals? Uh, my favorite would be spiritual baths. Mm. The one I would do more often, I would say, is uh, smudging with Palo Santo. Mm. Especially my locks. Our locks carry energy. Oh, so I need to start doing that. Instead of cutting them off, what? Let me take some smudging. Palo Santo, open that door, oh. wash my hair, put a white hair wrap on, I'm ready for the rest of the day. That's very smart. <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you hit. Hey, what do you, uh, why do you name yourself Empress Tree? Oh my God, I love this question. Thanks yeah. for asking. Um, <laughs> why? So I got the name Empress. So my dad got married in Jamaica in 2015. And my stepmom, she did my hair before like we got there. So I couldn't swim like the first three days. Yeah. So I'm hanging out with the Rastas on the side with my family swimming. And they'll like call me Empress, Empress, Empress. And I like at 15, like I was still cutting myself. You feel me? Like at 15, I was still like in a fucked up. I was in a bad mind frame, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, Empress, I'm like, I don't know what they got going on. You feel me? Cool, but I just went with it because, like, their rosters they were cool as heck. You yeah. feel me? So, uh, after that, I got back to the states and I started to read up on like uh, Rastafari and like Empress, Emperor Selassie, and all this other stuff. So, mm. the name Empress really stuck. And at the time, I had an afro, so I was fro Empress before I was Empress Tree. Mm. So, I was, I had an afro, I was fro Empress, that's who I was. And then, um, I got my locks. And I started to realize, like, I, I'm starting to look like a tree a little bit. Like, the way my locks are set up, like, these are my literal, like, leaves. My veins on the inside being my roots, literally and figuratively, like, this is who I am. Mm. You feel me? So, Empress from the Rastas, tree from my locks, Empress tree. Mm. Yeah. So, when it comes to traveling, you do travel a lot. What's some of your favorite countries you've been to? I'm definitely going to say the one I just went to. Um, <laughs> India was oh, so yeah. beautiful. Oh, Rishikesh always has a place in my heart. But Jamaica also mm. has a place in my heart as well. Mm. So what's, give me some experiences. What, what is uh, India like? India, oh wow. It's super colorful, super vibrant. I was in Rishikesh and that's like the yoga capital of the world. Mm. So um, the people were, I made a lot of friends. Like mm. I could walk out at night. Um, it was it was a pleasant experience. And you go walk out at night and feel safe. Yes, wow. I was chilling. You feel me with mm. the cows and the dogs and the the cars and mm. the scooters. There's a lot of there's a lot going on in the in the in the streets and stuff. Yeah. But um, being in Atlanta, you know, it didn't really yeah throw yeah, me off too much. Yeah, nothing new. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> it was so it was so good. Oh, uh, you practice good posture. You, you practice very good posture. What has helped you to gain that posture? Is it yoga? Yes. Yoga. So what, what's yoga. like the best? Can you give us like teachers a yoga pose? Yeah, which one? For good for good posture. Good posture. Yeah. Uh, so they say the goal of yoga is to be able to sit 
and suka isolate for a long time so to sit like this for a long time yeah. so actually meditating helps your pose your bro posture. what literally and if you start on the wall you'll be fine because then like you once you get off the wall you have to literally mm. keep yourself there and it's a mental thing it's a yeah. your physical can do it yeah but your mental is like oh i'm tired yeah i'm more tired i'm really they say tired. they say posture is like the, like the top three most important things when it comes to your confidence your energy yeah. everything and you could really read people by their posture yeah um but what about people who have like a lot of people suffer really weak shoulders where yeah. they can't hold up their posture that their one posture, right. so w w in that regard would it still be considered a, a mental thing or a physical thing no nah, that's definitely physical um okay. it's, it's definitely physical and i think through shoulder building asanas and like shoulder opening asanas and yeah. closing, closing. You, you can kind of train your muscles to be upright and then also like people have different backs so i know personally i have a natural arch so to make good posture i have to physically remember to tuck my tailbone in and keep my back straight whereas some people have a slouch yeah. so they would do more asanas that have to do with like opening arching i'd have to do more that have to do with like yeah. closing it really just depends on who you are and what your spine looks like mm -hmm. what have what have you experienced having a good posture uh, what have I experienced having yeah. a good posture? Like, like, have you noticed, okay, people give you compliments about it? Have you noticed feeling better mentally, physically? You're probably so used to it, though. Yeah, yeah really, you're so yeah. used to it. I would yeah. say the only thing it does is it, it gives, like, confidence out, even when I don't feel it all the way. Yeah. It's like, okay, like, even if I'm not confident in front of these people, I'm confident in my own house, which is my body. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm confident in my own home, you know? Like, mm -hmm. nobody, I don't even have any visitors yet. I should at least be confident in my own home. Mm -hmm. so. When did you have your spiritual awakening? Ooh, uh, as I was telling you earlier, when I had my spiritual breakdown when I was 13, mm. went to uh, Jamaica when I was 15. When I got back from Jamaica, that's when like I had so many conversations with the Rosses. That changed everything. Cause at the time, again, I was still cutting myself and all that other stuff. Yeah. We talked about that. Um, it was a lot going on. But when I got back, I would say 15, 16. That's when. I started watching Hidden Colors. I started studying Garvey. I started studying different ideologies from different philosophers. Mm -hmm. I started to get deeper in our research, deeper, deeper into myself. And it helps that I was on punishment most of the time because yeah. all I had time to do was read. So like, it all worked out. Um, but yeah, I started studying heavy 50, 15, 16, mm. around that range. Mm. And you broke out of a very strict religion oh my <laughs> god yes very strict you know okay. everybody has their own journey like i like to say like uh people who practice whatever they practice it's really a matter of that was your chosen way to get to the source whatever gets you to the source let it be that that just mm. wasn't my route mm -hmm. <laughs> honestly mm. so give us give us an affirmation for this video if there's one thing you want to teach people watching right now to you know the elders what would you teach them to the people people younger what would you teach them what would I teach yeah. you? Ah, does it have to be a short affirmation? It could be anything. It could be a sentence, a, a line. I was gonna say, a, can it be a little? Yeah, let a it be fragment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be a whole. <laughs> give it, give it as much as you want. Absolutely. Uh, if I was to give any advice to anybody, it would be believe in yourself. Like seriously. Like I literally got it tattooed on me because my mama tells me every day, believe in yourself. Like that's really like the the core to everything when you believe in yourself you believe in your visions when you believe in your visions you can make anything happen mm. when you believe that you can make anything happen manifestations aren't just manifestations no more that's your that's your life you're literally creating your life you're literally the game master of your own game while still being the participant you're always winning versus being at the butt end of your jokes being at the butt end of whatever is going on so believing in yourself Believing the feelings you have about people, about things, about mm. circumstances. But stop thinking you're tripping. You're not. You feel me? Like, you're not tweaking. Even if you're tweaking a little bit, half of you was right, to be honest. It may, it may not be in the right mind frame, but half of you was correct. Mm. So, uh, yeah, really, that's the biggest thing. Believing in yourself, I promise. It's changed the way I looked at myself, my life, how I view it trusting that i'm always in charge trusting that i'm always in control trusting that i'm protected mm. trusting that i'm always good always mm. i'll say what i was the end of this video if you guys want to see a part two like comment subscribe <laughs> share any, any last words impress um no thank you so much All for right. having me it's so fun i see <laughs> <laughs> huh? we see what it buys when we come from the sky i fly so high that i cross evil eyes we too no sheep